So this one's gonna be a little more handheld and a little more rough, let's just say. It's been one I wanted to do for a while and I just haven't had time to sit down and like really do up a good presentation on it. But this past week, and I don't know if there's like a test on this stuff coming across the entire United States and Canada, but I had so many different emails about this one concept. So I thought I should just do a quick video on it. And that's what I do. So I'm, I'm talking about Boolean algebra. Those of you who are doing logic gates and all that stuff, I get it. When I was in the class too, I found it was super, super frustrating and I couldn't get my head wrapped around it until I started figuring out how these truth tables and everything work. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hop into the whiteboard like I always do and talk about Boolean. Okay, so we're gonna jump into the whiteboard in a second here, but just remember when we're dealing with Boolean, it is, does not have to be as complicated as people make it. I get it, like binary, logic tables, truth tables, complementary, all these weird, crazy terms. At the base of it, just look at what the name says and it will kind of take you through it. So I'll show you what I mean. So let's hop into the whiteboard right now. So this one here, we've got the very most basic one you could have. This is called a buffer. Let me just write that down in my beautiful writing, buffer. And a buffer basically is like a switch. Now we're dealing with binary, so you have ones or zeros, ons or off. Now when our input sees a one, which is our A, our output, F, I don't know why they call it F, but just go with me here. And now we get to write AF on our sheet, so it looks funny. It makes me giggle every single time. Whatever happens, with one is going to happen to the output, one. So with our truth table, I say an input of one gives me an output of one. So whenever you turn it on, it turns on, turn it off, turn it off. I'm not gonna go into applications. I think I've said this before, but in this one, I'm not gonna show you how this all would work in real life. I just wanna go through each one of these and show you how they work, all right? So let's go to our next one. Our next one up. We've got a not gate, not. It's a NOT gate, which you can tell it looks like a buffer, but it has this little circle right here. What that means is whatever happens on the input, the opposite happens on the output. So if I have an input of one, then I'm gonna have an output of zero. And if I have an input of zero, I'm gonna have an output of one. So my truth table looks like this. One gives me zero, zero gives me one. And to go back up to this one, I forgot, zero gives me zero. So that's my NOT gate. Again, anytime you see this little dot at the end of something, any of these gates, that means that it's going to be the opposite of the previous gate. Let's take a look at our next one here. This is where things get a little more complicated because we have two inputs. We have an A input and a B input. So our truth table becomes A, B, and F. Now this is an AND, which means that in order for anything to happen, this input and this input have to do something to get an output. Now mathematically, you'll see this often written, A times B. And I'll show you what they mean by that. Now let's say we have an input of one on this one and a zero there. Let's throw that into our truth table, one and zero. One times zero is zero. That's where they get that from. Let's do this all over again. Let's get this out of the way. And let's say we've got now a zero and a one. So this is zero and a one. Well, zero times one is zero. So that takes care of that. Then let's go with a one and a one. One and a one, one times one gives me one. So you can see why they use this mathematical term of A times B, but the way I like to look at it, and we'll just finish this up by saying that with this one here, if I have an input of zero, and zero, putting this in zero and zero, well then I have an output of zero. But the way I look at it is, with this one here, it's an and. So this and this have to work for, in order for this to work. All right, so there's where the and comes from. Let's look, take a look at our next one. Now before I go on to this, make sure if you're having any problems with these, and I, I'm gonna say this because I'm gonna start saying this with all my videos, hit pause. That's the whole joy of this whole YouTube thing. Hit pause, take a look, take notes, hit pause, rewind. Use the technology to your advantage because it's awesome. And I wish I had this when I was going to school. I didn't, I know I'm dating myself, but use this stuff to your advantage. On all the videos that you're going through, just use that pause button. It's the most powerful button that you have on your computer when you're trying to learn through YouTube. Hit, re you can rewind like 10 seconds, 10 seconds, 10 seconds, go back and watch again and again and again, all right? now. 
hit pause, hit play, let's go. This one here, this you'll notice looks exactly like the AND gate, but it has this little thing here. So you can call that, I like to look at it as a negative AND because it's the opposite of, like bizarro AND, <laughs> but we'll call it a NAND gate. Meaning that whatever we saw in this truth table here for all of our outputs for the ANDs, they're gonna be the opposite of. All right, so one and a zero for a NAND gate, instead of a zero gives me a one, let me show you. So if this and this, one and zero would normally give me a zero, it gives me a one because of this little thing, the NAND. Then going through this again, zero and one, zero and one would normally give me zero, but it's a NAND gate, so we're going with that. Then we go one and one, normally would give me a one, but because it's a NAND gate, it gives me zero. And then we're gonna finish this up by saying zero and zero, normally would give me a zero, but gives me a one. So that's your NAND gate. Let's move on to this one. This one, I don't know why I have an affinity for this one, but this is what we call the OR gate. And I don't, I'd like the OR gate. Meaning that this input or this input will trigger the output. Okay, so let's give it, this will be A, this will be B, this will be F. This is A, this is B, this is F. So if one is true, so let's say one is true, but B is not, it's still true because it's OR, A or B. Zero or one, guess what, that's a one. One or both of them, that's a one. The only time we really see a zero is when we have two, these two here are turned off, will give us an output of zero. So that's where they say, sometimes you see it mathematically put as this, A plus B. When I do that, one plus zero gives me one. Zero plus one gives me one. One plus one, it gives me an output of one. You don't have two when you're dealing with binary. And zero plus zero gives me zero. Now our next one, we had an, a NAND gate, we had the AND and NAND. We have an OR and A. That's right. You got it. NOR. Bizarro OR. NOR gate. How do we tell that? Look at that little nub there. That tells us that. So again, let's give us the A. Oops. The A here, the B here, and the F here. And it's, it's the same thing. A, B, F. When I had one, zero, normally that would be the uh, one. Well, they're going to be a zero in this case. A zero and a one gives me a zero. A one and a one gives me a zero. A zero and a zero gives me a one. It's the opposite of the OR gate. Now, sometimes you'll hear it called the complement of, right? And so if I did the math on this, and pay attention to this and hit pause after this and just to kind of let it soak in. You'll hear them say, okay, for an AND gate, sorry, for an OR gate, it was A plus B. For a NOR gate, it's the complement of. So they put that to the one up top. So it means to the complement of. It also means it's the opposite, which is I don't like the term complement because it's confusing. So, but again, that is what it is. So you'll see if sometimes your instructors will do this though. Same thing. That just means complement, which is the opposite of whatever this was, and it was an OR gate, so it's an OR gate now, it's the complement of an OR gate. If you need to, to see that again, rewind that backwards and you can go through it. All right, we got the NOR, we're almost, we're halfway there. Okay, this one is a little bit different. Let's take a look here. You notice it's got this little line in front of here. This is what we call an exclusive OR. Exclusive OR. And the way this works is we have A, B, and my output. If I have a zero and a one, I get myself a one. If I've got a one and a zero, I get myself a one. What happens here with the difference with these exclusives are, if both of them are the same, so if I've got zero and a zero, that obviously is going to be a zero, but this makes it true as well. If I've got a, both A and B are working, then this one is gonna be zero. So it's an exclusive or meaning it's just exclusively for the these ones here. So they'll say, you'll hear some people say, okay, it's A, B, and it's exclusive that way. Meaning that it has to be either one or the other. That's your exclusive or gates, which can be a little bit trippy. So watch for this. The big way I remember it is, if both inputs are the same, then your output is zero. Okay, so if you both have zero, zero, well then it's gonna be zero. If a and B are both true, 
then it's gonna be zero as well. That's the exclusive wars. So again, hit pause, rewind, do whatever you can, write this out, it'll help. Okay, last one. We go to here, we have what's called our exclusive, let me get rid of this because I was a previous edit working on this. Uh, this is, you saw that, the XNOR. It's the same as the OR, exclusive OR, so we've got, but we've got this little nub at the end. So looking at this, one and a zero give, gave me a one before, now it gives me a zero. A zero and a one gave me a one before, now it gives me a zero. A zero and a zero before gave me a zero, now it gives me a one. That's the trick with this one. And so you can well imagine what a one and a one does. A one and a one gives us a one. Exclusive nor, the opposite of the or, the negative version of the XOR, the exclusive or. There you go, there's your logic gates. Again, not much to them, right? Like when you start breaking them down and start looking at the name, look for that and, or, and start thinking through that process. Again, rewind the video, watch it again. If you have a lot of familiarity with these kind of circuits and you're watching this video, please put in the comments if I've missed anything. Again, this is something I, I don't do a lot of, but I do really enjoy Boolean and I've used it a lot out in the field. If you have examples of where we might see these logic gates, and I'm specifically asking electricians, can you give examples in the comments below as well? I would love to see what you come up with, just to let the students know that these actually have value to them, that you will be using Boolean I used it on DCS systems when I was programming up north in the oil sands on computer control systems. So Boolean does play out, it does have value. So it's not one of those busy work that your instructors are trying to get you to do. There you go, there's your logic gates. I'll see you next week. As always, make sure if you have any questions, send them to me and I'll try to get a video up as soon as I can. This specific video came from a comment like that. So hopefully it helps and we'll see you next time, stay classy.